course, the guy who only won three games in the 1968 World Series, Mickey Lowett! Definitely. I mean, we should have won it in 67, you know what I mean? And it really bothered us. And when we went to spring training, we were ready to go. And we thought we had a real good team. The best part, a lot of the other teams we played in spring training, their players are coming up to us and saying, you guys got a made this year, you got a great team. So that was nice. Can you reiterate the story for me? When you used to go downtown and you'd see people at bus stops and how people, instead of, you know, being upset and then after the championship, how people were hugging and really uniting together as a team. You told us that story not too long. Well, I actually got the story from one of the police officers who worked Tiger Stadium. And he said in uh, 1967, you would find four or five people standing on a street corner and they were looking for trouble. They could tell. They said the same guys would be standing on the street corner in 1968. And they had a transistor radio when they were listening to the for me. So we must have made a difference. <laughs> I played with the free Andrews in Denver for two weeks, um, then I was off the team, but a lot of us used to, uh, it just being in spring training and being on the Major League roster, you know, I was on the roster for two years before I made the big league team, so you're with them in spring training, playing in the minor leagues, you, you got to know the guy and who his girlfriend was, sometimes her girlfriend ended up being his wife. And but you knew her, and there were some couple guys on every team that, I mean, Don Burke was married when I met him, and playing ball in Durham. Uh, who else? I mean, but you, you, we grew up together in the minor leagues, so when we came to the big leagues, we all knew each other. And it's like, hey, hey, how you doing? I mean, you're a good friend. It was like a, it was like a new guy coming to the club. And we, we had a bonding together known each other for many years. And, and then without free agency, you stayed together. Yeah, we stayed together. And, uh, played together for a long time because because by 1965, every guy that played on the 68 team was basically there in 65. So we had 65, 66, heartbreak was 67. Um, now we didn't play the minors with K-Line. <laughs> But I mean, Norm Cash was already here, but he was easy to get to know. He was such a wonderful person, you know. And I played the minors with Ray Euler. I mean, the whole the golf, I mean, we all knew each other. The primary story is that when Mayo Smith came out in the bowl, out in the outfield and told me I was going to the bowl game, it pissed me off, Roy. That's all I can say. Because I, I was having a few problems, but I'd been a starting pitcher. You know, ever since 1964. You know, so that's what five years I've been a starting pitcher, and all of a sudden he puts me in a bullpen because I'm struggling a little bit. You know, and I remember I told him, I says, if we win this thing, you, he says, I'm walking away very hot. I says, I walked away from him. I says, if we win this thing here this year, it's going to be because of me. But I was only talking about the season. I wasn't talking about the World Series. <laughs> I got my bench revenge back to World Series. <laughs> Were you nervous before Game Seven? No. I was not nervous. How could you not be nervous? I'm not that type of person. Okay. I'm just not that type. Of, you know, I'm a very easy going. The guys always used to say that I had ice water running through my veins. Anytime you had to pitch a big game, we'd want Mickey there. You know, they, had, they had the confidence in me. I love pitching big games. I thought, oh, these are fun. You know, big matchup. Let's go. You know, so. No, I wasn't nervous. You know, a lot of people say, gee, you pitch on two days rest. I said, yeah, no big deal. Well, weren't you nervous? You know? I said, no. Well, now, why weren't you nervous? Or had you had to have butterflies? I says, I didn't. Now, my wife was up all night. She says, I slept like a baby. You know? The fact is, at that time, I was doing a morning show with Dick Kirk. That's right. He used to call me at like 7 o'clock Detroit time to talk to me. This all had been prearranged prior to the World Series. Kirk says, he was sitting in the studio that, that morning, and his director was there, and he says, 
I don't think I should call Mickey this morning, you know, because time difference in St. Louis, you know. He's going to have to wake me up at 6 o'clock in the morning, and I'm pitching him some game of the world. So. And the director said, yeah, you've talked to him so many times, you know nothing bothers me. Give him a call. The phone rang. I said, hey, Dick, how you doing? He says, oh, God, thank you. <laughs> I pitched that fifth game when he, he uh, sang the national anthem. Uh, warming up in the bullpen down at Tiger Stadium, which was down the left field line, you were actually standing in the shadows of the stadium for a one o'clock ball game in the afternoon. And being it was October, there was a slight chill in the air. And I started to warm up, and I was just starting to get loose when the national anthem took place. Jose sang his version of the national anthem, which by today's standards would be fantastic. He even thrown a curveball yet. And as you know, I scared the hell out of all you people by letting them get a three to nothing lead in the first inning. And then I settled down and everything worked out fine. <laughs> a home run, because his only home run was in the series. They just hit his bat. <laughs> Controversy in the series with the play at the plate where Brock safe out, obviously called called out. We, when you look at that play again, it was the right call made. And when you see Brock at Hall of Fame events, Al, we see him around old timers. He swears it was the wrong call. What do you guys think? Well, he swears uh, he was uh, safe, and we knew he was out. <laughs> and if he would have slid, he probably would have been called safe. But uh, but he didn't, and he paid the consequences. And I was standing 15 feet away. He was out. <laughs> Brock ran us ragged in the World Series. I mean, uh, he scored bases off me. I don't know, maybe he probably had three or four off me in the World Series. Oh, it was nothing to nothing. You know, they were getting off a little bit farther than they normally were. And it's like they were getting ready to go on that pitch. And when I saw the gap, I mean, it's like, holy shit, he's got an awful big lead over there. You know? I guess I better throw it to first base. And as I, yeah, and as I made my move to go to first base, or just make my move, because, I mean, as my leg came up, they took off. Well, you know, I just threw behind him and cashed through the second. Got a little rundown going. Two out, nobody on, no score, seventh inning, Tigers at bat. Seventh game of the World Series. Now the windup and the pitch. Swing, there's a looping drive to right. It'll drop in for a single by Cash. Here's Willie Horton. Ground ball, left side through, base hit by Horton. Cash checks in and holds it second. Now the set by Gibson, we're ready. There's a swing and a fly ball to center. Here comes Flood digging hard. He almost fell down. It's over his head for a hit. Cash is rounding third. He scores. Willie Horton rounding third. He scores. Northrop goes into third base. Detroit leads two to nothing. Well, there's the one that breaks it open, Pee Wee. Yeah, it looked like Kurt Flood. He charged in on that ball. Then he saw that the ball wasn't harder than he thought it was. He tried to break back. He slipped on it and then could not catch up to the ball. Lonis fires. Ball is hit high in the air. This should be the series. Freehand waving everybody away in foul territory. Detroit wins. <laughs> I knew we were going to win. No more money, crying money, but I don't have to use it anymore. They really sacked it to him, and they knew what they were doing when they pitched Lolich against Gibson. 